Good morning, Razi, and good morning, Fotokina. This is the last day of Epson Red Sea live broadcast from the Red Sea to the Fotokina of 2010 fair. We have therefore prepared some very special items for today. What I'm holding here is not just a jar of water. It's a jar full of seahorses swimming as we speak. Laboratory raised seahorses. And although I cannot read their minds, I can only imagine how excited they must be. After all, after spending all of their lives up until now in a laboratory, today will be the first encounter with the Red Sea. This is an exciting day for these little seahorses indeed. Yeah. It's amazing how beautiful such a small creature can be. But Sharon, just out of curiosity, who raised seahorses in the laboratory <laughs> and why would anyone come up with such an original idea? It's a good question, Razi. The Elat Underwater Observatory Marine Park was an institute to raise these uh, seahorses in the laboratory and the purpose was to assist with um, reviving and supporting the coral reefs in the underwater world here in the area in Elat. It's a blessed cause by all means. Elat's Underwater Observatory Marine Park is an ecological site that was established in the purpose of promoting the interest of the Red Sea in this area. First, it serves as a base, educational base for both adults and children, providing them with knowledge regarding the underwater uh, creatures here around in Elat. This valuable knowledge assists people with respecting the underwater world and also provides them with the understanding of what has to be done in order to preserve it. The Underwater Observatory, I'm sorry Dirk, to you. The Underwater Observatory also consists of a research department. This research department invests all of its energies in finding out what are the best ways for us to help out the underwater creatures and ensure their well-being. The Underwater Observatory, as its names apply, is also a great touristic attraction. By visiting the Underwater Observatory, people get the chance to meet some of the most fascinating creatures that are found here underwater in the Red Sea of Felat, including sharks, sea turtles, eels, rays, and much more. Well, Razi, the only reason I'm holding this jar of seahorses here is because I insisted to personally wish them good luck before they enter the water and start this wonderful journey. Underwater, as we speak, the curator of the Underwater Observatory is waiting for us and I think that there's nobody more qualified for this job than he is. Hello, Aviv. Hello, Aviv. Hello, Sean. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, Aviv. I'm very good. How is it feeling underwater? It is beautiful here, the water in the Red Sea of Eilat. Uh, the water is very nice. The fish is all ready. I think the seahorse is ready and I am definitely ready. Th that's great. Uh, Aviv, I'm passing this jar of seahorses to you and you should receive it underwater within a few minutes. Meanwhile, I would like us to watch a short video clip showing us what those seahorses have been going through up until now. Welcome to the Underwater Marine Park Eilat Israel. My name is Aviv Levy. I'm the curator of the Marine Park. I would like to invite you to see our seahorse breeding project. As you can see right here in the middle, we have Hercules. This is our nickname. I'm pretty sure why we called him. Very large, very big seahorse. Very rare also to find him. All right, so this is where the parents live. Have you see inside this aquarium? Uh, we have, of course, males and females. This is where it all begins. This is the first aquarium with all of the young seahorses, as you can see. They're all about one to two centimeters long. They're about two weeks old. And they must be very, very gentle in the, t the way we take care of them. We must give them the correct amount of food, meaning small food for very small mouths. And we will give them one of their first meals. This is a very long process of feeding seahorses because they're very slow. They're very gentle and they must be taken care of from cleaning their tanks, giving them the right amount of food, and more important, making sure they have these special objects that they can catch with their tail. Just before we go into the beautiful Red Sea to release some seahorses, this is the time where we can collect them. 
We have all the sea horses that were born here three to four months ago. You saw uh, the different uh, stages of the growth. And this is the last stage. We're going to now collect them. And this is the most fun part and the most fulfilling part in our job is where we get to release these seahorses after growing them for three to four months. Well, Aviv, it sure seems like these seahorses have been through a lot. Can yes, you definitely. Can you please tell me why you chose this specific location out of all the dive sites in Alat to release the seahorses? Of course. The area we are here now has got the seagrass. The seagrass, especially the house where the seahorses can catch themselves with the tail, and by this is their natural habitat. This is where they can find their food, this is where they can breed, and most important, this is where they can survive and create a new generation of seahorses. And it, once released to the water, is there anything specific that we are expecting them to do? Is there anything specific we would like them to do in order to know that it was a successful release? What we are expected that the seahorses will catch the seaweed with their tail and start eating as fast as possible. We want to see them here trying to really coordinate the new, new place, meaning they need to start eating is the best way that we can know that they're happy in their new house. All around. Aviv, I can see that my seahorses have reached their destination. I think uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure regarding the seahorses, but I'm ready. Are you ready, Sean? I'm ready, Aviv. Are you ready? Uh, yes, I'm ready. It looks like the seahorses are ready, so let's get it on. Let's do it. Wow. As you can see, Sean, we're just ready. We slowly really caught them. Wow. The Dear seahorses, welcome to the Red Sea. Ah, this is so exciting. So how's their reaction so far? Yeah, so far they're doing what we they're expected to do. And I can see this one is just starting to eat right down there. So soon. Yeah, so soon. It is very amazing. You need to remember that inside the seagrass, we have all of the good food. Yes, Shalom. Aviv, is there Are anything? You ready for another? Yeah, sure. Let's do it again. If you have 10 jars, I'm ready for 10 jars as well. How's the second jar going, Aviv? Uh, yes, yeah, so far there's one that wants to stay inside. <laughs> we will try to take him outside. And here he comes out. There I'm sure they're happy now. Okay, I want to count them. Sure, give them a count. See. Yes, it seems like everybody is okay. We can see that these ones are still looking and this one right here is starting to eat. This is so great. Aviv, I have a question. 
Is there anything that we divers can do in order to assist in preserving these seahorses and ensuring their well-being underwater? Of course, we need to remember that the seagrass is the home of the seahorses. But not only do the seahorses live here, all of the small organisms. We must take care of the water. We must make sure that we do not treat these things as just seagrass. This is a home of four thousands of creatures. We need to keep the water current and remember that we are only visitors here in the water. Diver, please keep that in mind. Dirk? Razi or Dirk, do you know if anyone at the Photokino Fair has any questions to Aviv underwater? Sharon, I'd like to ask Aviv, uh, are there any sea donkeys? <laughs> Aviv, you're being, asked, you're being asked if there are any sea donkeys in the water. Uh, no, uh, we don't have any sea donkeys. We have sea cows. <laughs> And we have sea cats, but we have no sea donkeys here. <laughs> but thank you, Razi. That was a great question. Okay, so if there are no further questions from the Photokino Fair, then I guess we'll introduce our next live broadcast. Our next live broadcast is planned for 3 o'clock and it will be featuring a very special um, mammal instinct. This mammal instinct allows babies, infants, I'm talking about humans of course, just a few months old, to instinctively hold their breath underwater once their head is submerged in water. And they can dive in the Red Sea even before they have ever learned to crawl or to walk. So stay tuned with us at 3 o'clock. I would like to thank Aviv very much for this great live broadcast. It was thrilling and I enjoyed it very much. Thank you, Aviv. Thank you very much, Sharon. This is Sharon Reynes for Epson Red Sea, live broadcasting in full HD from Elat, Israel. Thank you and see you soon again.